Flight planning is an essential part of flying both VFR and IFR, and Garmin Pilot makes it super easy. Gone are the days of having a paper nav log and having to file it by calling flight service. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to create and file a flight plan in Garmin Pilot. So we are gonna start with the basics so you know exactly what to do, but if you're an advanced user of Garmin Pilot, you can use the chapters in this video to skip forward. So when you first log into Garmin Pilot, you're gonna be prompted to create a pilot profile. Just in case you need a run through on how to do that, let's go ahead and walk through it real quick. So you'll go from home to settings, to pilot info, and then you can add or modify your current pilot profile. So if we add a pilot profile, you just need to add your name, your phone number, your address, your certificate number, and then if you want to add any VFR, IFR, or WINS for personal minimums, you can do that as well. And then it'll warn you in your flight planning if the conditions are meant to exceed your personal minimums. When you're all done with that, you can hit save, and then there's your pilot profile. Now the next thing you need to do is make sure that you have an accurate aircraft profile set up. So if you have an aircraft already created, you can select it and modify any of the fields. But if you need to create a new aircraft profile, just hit add aircraft, select your manufacturer, and then select your model. Now you'll have to agree to these terms by pressing continue, choose what fields you wanna import. So at a minimum, we do need the basic data, but you might as well import the performance, weight and balance, and checklist information as well. You can hit continue, and then you just need to add your empty weight and your empty CG. Okay, so for this exact aircraft, our empty weight is gonna be 1171.9. Be sure to get these numbers out of your POH, don't copy mine. And then our empty CG is going to be 35.5 inches. Now that we've got that, we can hit done. And now you're up on the edit aircraft screen. Now here we need to add our identifier. So I'm just going to do test so I don't use this in flight. And then we need to specify our colors. We need to put our base airport in there. And then as far as requirements for filing, we do need to list our comm and our nav equipment. Let's say we've got standard and then the addition of GPS. And then for our surveillance equipment, we have MODES and altitude reporting and then ADSB in and out. And then that's it for our required information. So we can hit save. I do recommend that you go through and completely fill out this information to the best of your ability. I will also say if you fly an uncommon aircraft and it's not saved for the manufacturer's recommended items, hit the video up here where we'll walk through specifically how to set up a new aircraft. Um, but I'm not going to cover that in any more detail for the purposes of this video. Okay, so now that we've got our pilot profile and our aircraft profile set up, we can start working on our flight plan. So I will go home, flight plan, or you can access it from the map. If you're in the map screen, you can just tap flight plan up here and that page drops down. So first off, we need to make a decision on if we're making a flight plan for immediate use or if we're making it for use in the future. So planning mode down here in the bottom left-hand corner will be used for looking into the future. So then we can select our departure date and time. So say we want to depart at 1255, we'll call that good. All that's gonna do is A, it's gonna carry over that time when you go to file and it's going to use the forecasted weather information for that time period when it comes time to do your weather briefing. Okay, so the next step is going to be to select your aircraft. There is that aircraft, that, we, that 152 that we just entered, so we can go ahead and select that there. And then we can start planning our route. So let's go ahead and add our origin airport of Bolivar, and say we wanna to fly to Branson at KBBG. I do know this route goes straight through the Springfield class Charlie. So just for example's sake, I let's plan like we want to fly underneath the Charlie apron. So we'll need to graphically edit this and we can pull that to the side and say we want to fly over Springfield downtown. So now this is our along track waypoint and you can view that here. And we could have manually added that by typing an in route waypoint and you can add as many of those as you want. Okay, so now that we've got these three waypoints down so we can try to fly underneath the Class Charlie apron, we can get a little more detailed in our flight planning. So in Bolivar, if we're going to fly a departure procedure, so if we're leaving a Class Bravo, we can load that procedure here by selecting our departure. Bolivar's a non-controlled airport, so we don't have departure options, but I did want to bring that up. We can come over here to Actions, though, and we can specify an origin runway. So if we are leaving runway 18, You'll see we can specify that. And now it's gonna build in 
flying the runway heading for a little bit and then making a standard rate turn on course as we leave the pattern. Now you do need to be careful. It's like if I change this to where we leave runway three, six, it'll build in your standard rate turn, but it's a right-hand turn. It goes against the grain of the left-hand traffic pattern. So you need to be careful there because you don't want to fly opposite the traffic pattern. So just keep that in mind when you're specifying a departure runway. So I can go ahead and change this back to runway one eight. And then it's also worth noting that there are some other actions that you can do, that you can do here. You can view the airport information right from the screen if you want to view the current weather information or the recommended runway with the wind right here. There's all sorts of good information built in there. You can completely change the airport altogether if we wanted to specify like leaving from Buffalo, we can do that. And now it's going to change that flight plan completely. I will go ahead and make that back to Bolivar. And then we can also create like an along track offset waypoint from here. So if we specify we want to fly a three nautical mile offset 2000 feet within three nautical miles of the airport, we can go ahead and load that in and specify that we're going to begin our climb out from 2000 feet to our planned altitude at that point in time. And you can also specify like on an along track waypoint, if we wanna fly underneath the Charlie, cause what the lower end of this apron is 2,500 feet. So if we want to fly under the Charlie, we should plan for flying like 2,200 feet. So now what we can do is we can come up here to the flight profile and see how we have this set up and how we're planned to fly underneath the Charlie. Now it shows that if we begin our climb immediately after Springfield downtown, we'll hit the Charlie. So we can go ahead and graphically edit this again and just throw down that waypoint there. And now we're flying underneath the Charlie apron. You do have some action items that you can modify by clicking on an in route waypoint. Um, you can set it to a fly over waypoint so if you change it to a flyover waypoint, then you're going to cross the waypoint prior to initiating the turn. Whereas if it is a flyby waypoint, you will cross over the waypoint at the midpoint through your turn. That probably matters less for us VFR guys and more for the instrument procedures. You can also delete an in route waypoint. So say we don't want to use this along track offset, we can delete that out of there. And if we want to add in another in route waypoint, we can, or if we want to come in here, we can manually insert before or after the waypoint to specify where it is in that order. From here, you can create a hold. You can create another along track offset waypoint. You can enter altitude constraints, or you can even do a search and rescue pattern starting at this waypoint. So there's a lot of different features that you can build in right here from your flight plan. You can also do the same for your destination. So on the actions, you can view the same airport information as before. You can change or remove the destination, or you can specify a runway by coming here, the same way that we specified our departure runway. Or if you want to load an approach, we can do that. So let's go ahead and load our RNAV for runway 32 for Branson. And then we can just pick a random approach. However, note, you can't load an approach when you're in planning mode. So we can change that to navigating mode select our approach, runway 32, the KDAN transition, and then we can load it. And now your approach is automatically loaded up. Now what it does do, if you already have an airport selected, it's going to make that airport a flyover waypoint. So we can delete that out. And now it doesn't require you to fly over the airport. It's going to take you to that first fix. Now at any point, if you want to modify this, you can press procedures and then you can change or remove the approach altogether. And then it'll just go ahead and leave in your runway planning a VFR entry to that airport. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, kind of how we want it, we can do a couple of little tweaks here at the bottom. We need to specify an altitude. So the planned altitude needs to be higher than any of our altitude constraints in order for the altitude constraints to work. So we need to be at at least 3,500 feet um, you can see with the winds, we're going to have a headwind, so we want to stay as low as possible. So it's going to automatically recommend like an easter or westerly pattern based off of the direction that you're flying, but you can override that here or view all the chunks of altitude. And then if you're flying IFR, you can go ahead and select the IFR altitude chunks at the bottom as well. So we'll just go ahead and select our 3,500 feet because I don't want to fly 300 feet above the ground at 1,500 feet to save 0.2 gallons. Now let's go ahead and select our performance settings. So if you remember how we imported the manufacturer's information, well, all of our power settings are in here as well. Now you can see from here, it's automatically going to calculate our true airspeed and our 
burn rate based off of that power setting. So if I increase it, you can see our burn rate goes up to 5.8 gallons an hour from our original 5.3. We can also come down here and click on our nav log to view kind of the more traditional listed out style of our waypoints. And then if there's any warnings along the route, those will show up here. So it is gonna show obstacle and terrain information, but then also if there's any TFRs, if there's any planned restricted airspace along your route, these warnings will pop up here as well. A couple of things before we move on, this little briefcase down here in the bottom left-hand corner with the green check mark signifies that we have all of the appropriate downloads for this trip. However, if you don't like have the appropriate downloads downloaded for that trip, you can click on here and it'll recommend um, different information like charts along your route. So if you're doing a long cross country, say if I went out west and I don't have those charts downloaded, it will prompt me and give me the opportunity to download those charts from here. You can also choose to invert this flight plan. So if say you just completed this flight and you wanna reverse it, you can just press invert and it will flip flop all of those waypoints. And then if you wanna share this flight plan with anybody else, you can hit that up arrow and share your route data as a Garmin pilot file, or you can print your nav log. So if that's required for your operation, if you're doing a check ride and you need to provide something to your DPE, it'll automatically generate a nav log in which you can mark up and then print or share it from here. Okay, so now that we've got our flight plan how we want, you can do one of two things. You can change this to navigating mode and start flying off of it right now. So now we've got this flight plan sequenced up and we can go to the map and you can see now we're flying direct to this little waypoint to skirt underneath the Charlie. Or you can come here, change it to planning mode and then hit create trip and it'll save it as an entry in the trip planner for future use. So then this is gonna take us to the trip planning screen where it loads in a lot of the different information. If you need to specify a different pilot profile, you can do that here. You need to specify which filing service you're going to use. So if you're logged into flightplan.com through the Garmin app, you can change that here. We'll just use Lidos, that's fine. And then we can change our aircraft as well. However, that didn't carry over from the flight plan. So if you had that correctly configured, you don't need to make that change. Your departure, destination, and routing information should be pre-populated in here. If there's any planned ATC routing for that, you can select that here and change that flight plan. If you chose an IFR flight plan, you can enter your alternate destination right here. And then it's gonna import your fuel settings. You can click on this fuel planner here to get an estimate of how much the trip is gonna cost. So put in your current fuel in the aircraft what your planned takeoff fuel is. So you can specify that say we wanna to go to full tanks. So we need to add seven and a half gallons. Using the price at Bolivar, it's going to estimate our fuel cost of $34 for this trip. And then it also shows our reserve time and fuel remaining. If you're doing like some sort of a commercial operation, there is some advanced information here to add like the type of flight and then some of your survival equipment if that's required. Now here we can move up here and go back to the nav log. This is a very similar page to just viewing what waypoints you have listed out. And then let's go ahead and move to the brief section. So this is very cool. This will generate a PDF of a weather briefing using the same information that flight service gets when you call and ask them. So I have the abbreviated briefing selected and you can see that since our departure is within the two hour window, we can go ahead and run a briefing and get this information and it gives you, look, 17 pages of weather and advisory information along your route. So it shows all the NOTAMs, convective, SIGMATs, AIRMATs, G AIRMATs, everything like that. It shows the static weather pages posted by the National Weather Service. It'll show you the surface analysis for your forecasted departure time. So you can zoom in and view kind of the radar information and if there's any higher low pressure fronts moving in. It'll list the METARs reported along your route. You can view these METARs down here. If there's any pilot reports, if there's any forecasted clouds, you can view those here. There's just all sorts of great information. I am over the moon about this feature, if you can't tell. Um, you got, got your winds loft information. Granted, there's no wind reporting station between here and Branson, so that's kind of blank. It's just very, very detailed. So this is great. Now you, you don't have to call flight service anymore. You can just run this and get your abbreviated briefing this way. And then you can also save it. So you can either share it with somebody or you can save it and print it however you want to do that.
Okay, so now that we've got our briefing out of the way, we can click on weight and balance. And if you've got a weight and balance profile loaded for your selected aircraft, now you can, you can view that. It's gonna automatically import your fuel configurations. So your fuel burn is already preloaded in there. If you need to make any adjustments, you can edit the load sheet here and say we want to, we need to go ahead and add a pilot. So here we can make any adjustments to our pilot and to our fuel amount. And then it shows our takeoff, our landing, and our zero fuel amounts. We can hit done and it's automatically gonna update that load sheet on your flight plan. So once that load sheet is created, you can share it. So you can do the same thing that we did with the flight plan where you can mark it up and then you can either print it or you can share it with somebody else through text message, however you wanna do that. Or if it's required to print one out for commercial operations, you can do that here. So now that we've got all of this information put in, we're ready to file. So all you have to do is hit file and then it warns you like, hey, this is legit, so I'm not gonna hit it. But then you hit file and then it's ready with flight service. When you're ready to activate it, you get within your window, call them up and activate it and you're good to go. Now, if you don't have this loaded in your flight plan, like we'll come back to the map and you can see we've got a blank map. Instead of needing to manually recreate the same waypoints in the flight plan, we can come to the trip planner, we can select our trip and then we can hit activate and then that's gonna go ahead and throw all of these waypoints in their exact sequence and you're ready to go. Now just hit direct to, select your first waypoint, hit activate, and now you're flying in this automatically sequenced flight plan. So it's that simple to carry it over and use Garmin Pilot for navigation from your flight plan as well. Now I will say, if you don't want to use the flight planning screen, you can manually create trips. So you can come in here, you can add a trip, you can manually select your departure, destination, and in or out waypoints, and all of that information and file from here as well. I just find it a little easier to use the flight planning screen to get the graphical representation so you can see the lines and the waypoints, and then share it to the trip planner, but it's just a personal preference at that point in time. So as you can see, this is an incredibly powerful tool. It's like an all-in-one package that Garmin has created for us and allowing us to do our flight planning, get our weather briefing, and do our filing all in one spot. I hope you've learned a lot in this video and that you can apply it the next time you want to file a flight plan. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you. I thank you for watching this video till the end, and we'll see you in the next video.